Brawlers, baby. I'm a brawl on a mission, undefeated, undisputed, catch his right hook, don't miss you. I'm the greatest, like Ali, pet power wearing my punch, line him up, knock him down, boy, this really what you want, I put you dead in your front. Well, not even that, here we go, we live, baby, it's your boy Rick Muhammad, it's the Brawler Sports, uh, Brawler Sports Boxing Show, Brawler Sports Media, if you will, and tonight's guest, if you will, is my main man, all the way back in Denver, Colorado, but he originally from the chocolate city of D.C., and his name is DeVarrell Touch of Sleep Williamson. Uh, this brother here, for y'all who don't know, I call this a blast from the past. This is my throwback, where are they now type show, if you will. And DeVarrell had a hell of a uh, amateur career, if you will. He had uh, a lot of success, come from a pedigree of uh, a good amateur background, uh, 120 and 17 and 1. Uh, with 103 knockouts. That's a lot of damn knockouts. So if you understand why they call him the touch of sleep, that was why. And then as his pro career went on, he, he finished at 27 and 8 with uh, 23 knockouts. So uh, that was impressive as well. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the champ to y'all. And, and, and really an introduction ain't even needed, but here's my man, DeVero, touch of sleep wins. What's up, champ? I'm very good, pretty ready. Thank you again for having me on. Man, and find the time that we synced up and linked up, and I, I'm so grateful for it. So I'm here at the gym now, uh, in front of my little my little shrine, my little my little mini shrine, and I'm <laughs> I'm excited to be here and be on your show, man. So it's, it's man. all good, bro. It's all love. It's a pleasure having you, brother. You know we go way back on top of that. So uh, I just want to touch base with you real quick. You know, uh, how, talk about the pandemic. Uh, how that's affected your business, how it's affected your life. But let's talk about before we go into the pandemic, let the fans know who who knew, who followed you and still know who you are to today. Where have you been in boxing since you're exiting the ring? And what have you been doing as far as contributing back to the sport as well? You, you know, Ricky, it's a very good question. I've kind of been the same guy the whole time. Uh, as I was building my career, I, uh, I started teaching a, a boxing class on the weekends, on Saturday mornings. Then it went from Saturday mornings to Sunday mornings. Okay. Then, uh, I just wanted to uh, develop relationships and friendships, kind of like doing well by doing good. As I'm coming up, uh, sometimes a person would see me working out or working them out. Then I will win a fight on ESPN. And I wake up the next, I get up early in the morning, come back the next day at four o'clock. I'm in the barber shop, and everybody's like, "Go on, crazy thing, man! You just fighting last night on TV." It, it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it's making yourself a part. I got into boxing a little bit later, so I started at 25 years old. So I was already a grown man. I finished college. I was in grad school. You know, mm -hmm. it, it was a, it was a part, of, it was a part of my life. But it, it was just something that that that, that happened that I, I had no idea I'd be good at. I thought I'd be in the NFL being one of the quarterbacks in the NFL, but that didn't really materialize as much as I hoped it would. And so I used boxing, state shape football, and I just let football go and just put all my energy um, and concentration in boxing. And, um, mm. and it was very, very – I'm so glad that I made that change because I've had a lot of success in boxing as an amateur and as a professional as well. So yeah, I, I – um, I've been teaching classes. I, I own my own gym out here in Inglewood, Colorado. Um, the city. What's the name of the gym? What's the name of the gym, oh, Tim? TOS Boxing Gym. TOS Boxing Gym, the acronym for Touch and Sleep. So <laughs> TOS Boxing Gym. So you can just Google it. You come right up. And um, TOS Boxing Gym is in Inglewood, Colorado. You know, we, we, we're here. Um, I don't know. It, it's, it's just a, a good a good situation. I, I'm, I'm very happy of how I 
interacted and treated my clientele because they kind of loved on me through this pandemic. Um, and, you know, we're all hurting, but maybe I'm, I'm drinking water rather than drowning. Um, yeah. and, and I'm so grateful. Uh, my kids program, I have a kids program. It's called, um, it's called TYP, Touchstone Youth Program. And it just serves, right now we're servicing kids in the city of Inglewood. So we have uh, middle school kids is our main bread and butter. And then we have some elementary kids. And then if you got to be a fifth or sixth grader, and then we have some high school students. And so, but okay. our main core is trying to, to touch lives in middle school. And maybe we can change them or maybe we can, uh, you know, I wouldn't say row the boat, but more like steer the boat and trying to uh, guide these young people, boys and girls, uh, in direction that that's, that's profitable for them, uh, productive. Uh, when, I, when I when I when I receive the kids into the, into the gym into the home, yeah, I give them a tour about some of the things I've accomplished. You know, uh, you know, some of the people I've met, some of the pictures they see on the wall, and all that's good and dandy. Then I'll take them into my office. In my office, I have um, um, in my office I'll have different uh, graduation uh, diplomas from elementary, middle school, high school, uh, college, and then grad school. Then you see um, you see um, the uh, Hall of Fame, uh, uh, Colorado Boston Hall of Fame, uh, big picture, and, and it's just like you know, you never know. You start here at maybe 10 or 11 years old. Yeah, no idea what's going to happen. You know, in the next couple of years, and you just got to keep keep turning corners and, and being productive, working hard. You know, trying whatever it is you want to do, whether it's I don't know, maybe music, piano, guitar, the drum, whatever. What, 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 whatever. Right. And, and just trying to let the kids know that no no one knows. I mean, no one knows. This is a long world here. You know, yeah. it's a long life here. You have no idea what you're going to turn out. I started boxing 25. So all things that happened in my life before 25, they were important. Right. Those were things that kind of helped, helped prepare me for this, this, this game here, this sport. And as right. you know, the sport is tough. I mean, sport, I mean, you know, sometimes people say, man, the boxing game is worse than the dope game. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's real. It's like, hey, you know, yeah. like, it's, it's, you know, this backstabbing, this gangster, I mean, it's, you know, no mobsters, it's, you know, but it, it, it's it's a ride, it's a roller coaster ride out of this world that 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 I wouldn't trade in for anything because of my experiences. Good, yeah. and bad. you know what I mean like you know you say you know you thank God, I thank God for the good and the bad. Yeah, absolutely. So for for those of you who don't know, he said he started at twenty five years old. Uh, he was late blooming in boxing. This, this gentleman here uh, been to undergrad school, got multiple master's degrees, if you will. So there was plenty of avenues of approaches that he could have took in different routes and different paths uh, to solidify who he wanted to be and become as a man. But he chose boxing. He was a walk-on, and he tried out in the NFL as a walk-on for the Indianapolis Colts. And like he said, you know, football didn't work out for him, so he took the next best road, which was – professional boxing amateurs first and then he went on to become a professional uh that being said as he stated his gym is in inglewood colorado touch of sleep boxing tos and for y'all that don't know for all you professional fighters out there that's watching who have what you call a training budget if you will uh the elite fighters already on their platform they're wearing straps and they and they fight for the big money this gym is ideal for any of you guys to come and train and get exactly what you're looking for in a camp. It's in the mile high, 7,500 feet above surface, if you will. So when you come down, you depressurize and you're in tip top shape because that air in Colorado is so thin. That's where you want to be. That's where you want to do your road work. That's where you want to spar. When you leave there from camp and go to your fight site, you're going to be in tip top shape. So I just want to throw that out there for all the fighters that's looking for up a newer training facilities to give them maybe a, a more of a push or edge what they need coming up for that big fight that they have. Check my man out, DeVera Williams in a touch of sleep in Inglewood, Colorado. Just go out there and visit the gym and see. He's got a state-of-the-art program and a facility there that you guys and your team would be more than comfortable 
uh, attending. Moving forward, uh, you know, he's giving back to the community. He's working with children. That's always a good thing. Uh, he's got adults that he trains, the white collar folks, if you will, that they, they don't want to compete in boxing, but they want the workout to stay fit, stay healthy, and tone their muscles and get in shape. So he does it all. And so it's, move, also move. Nice. it's also nice, uh, Pretty Ricky, that sometimes, um, you know, you have structured sparring with some of the some of some of the, uh, the, the people who are in the corporate world, and then you know they have conversations like, "Man, whoo, I had I was in the room with the crowd, you know, whoo, yeah, out, and it's just scary to make them their heart breathe. I mean, yeah. their, 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 their their heart rate go up, and oh my god, I mean, like, yeah. they, and they have something to talk about over lunch, like, man, that's crazy. I had a great experience, and that. You know, I didn't get hit or hurt. We know we're not here to hurt you. But, you know, we need this, you know, you know, talk smack and, and get a good experience. And, and it's so much fun because, you know, like, if you get a chance to, uh, to like, walk in uh, John Elway or Peyton Manny or Chan Bailey or one of the football players or basketball players, you know, here, I'm not, I'm not saying who I am. I'm just saying, hey, it's just nice to, to see a life of a professional fighter, you know, who's done well. You know, you know, who has some ups and downs like we all have in life. And Absolutely. hey, you, you know, you you, you have an opportunity to to be, you know, um, no, you know, you know, be, you know, rub elbows and you know, me lean on you and just talk smack. And, you know, right. it, it's just a good, a good, really positive environment. Um, right. We we have uh, we have uh, Michaela Mayer. Uh, she'll she'll be here training here. And I think, you know, she'll be training here for her next fight. So we're excited okay. that by the end of the month. And she'll be here, you know, tomorrow. And I'm excited because, you know, her camp, coach, of course, Coach Al Mitchell and his staff, you know, they do a really good job with her. And I'm happy that um, to have, you know, to have them, you know, you know come in the gym and, and use it. And I thought that she looked really, really good. The best I've ever seen her, her last fight. So okay. I'm hoping that. That right there gives a little buzz, and maybe in the future, other people will. will yeah, because well. because of the results that she received, that should encourage other fighters that want to prepare for a big fight they got coming up to come out there and check out your gym, Touch of Sleep, and in Inglewood. You know what I mean? It's got to be a big fight. It's got to be a meaningful fight. This, meaningful fight. They, you know, there's something that they they, they want to you know. Like sometimes you get these fights, and it's a showcase fight, or you get yeah. a fight, and it's like you know. This is how I can make a splash. If I look good here, you know, sometimes yeah. man, when when this fight look good, the next fight. This will catapult you to the next level. To the next level, and maybe you know, you 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 make, uh, let's say you make ten thousand on this fight, and why the reason why people in the boxing is because you don't make ten thousand dollars next fight. You win this fight, you your 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 purse goes up three hundred percent. Right, you you could you could you could you could go from a ten thousand dollar fight and look like a superstar on that ten thousand dollar fight, and your next fight is six figures and upward. Just depends on how you mean how the ball rolls. Just like that, yep. Just like that. So now, the reason why they called you touch of sleep in the sport of boxing because you had that devastating overcrossed right hand, and the reason they call him touch of sleep if he ever caught you with it, you was going to sleep. So. <laughs> When I compare you now, when I look back at the former WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder, he got that same stick, that same strike. You know, when, if he catch you, it's lights out. Same with you when you was fighting, touch of sleep. As soon as you catch him with that old cross right, same power, lights out, a horrific knockout, if you will. Speaking of that, which let's let's talk about your craft, your division as the heavyweight. Deontay Wilder and the recent rematch where he profusively got beat and outboxed and stopped by Tyson Fury in February of this year. What was your thoughts when you saw that fight? What went through your mind for, for Wilder? Uh, it, it's, um, it's a tough fight because the first fight, uh, I think he knocked, he, knocked Wild, he knocked Tyson Fury down twice. Twice, yeah. And when the guy, when Tyson Fury got up in 12th round and got up, I think that sometimes when you when you knock a guy down, your adrenaline goes here. But when a guy gets up, it takes something out. He's like, oh my God, he got up. 
and he yeah. got out. And, and, and Deontay maybe couldn't compose himself. And that right there, the, the first fight. Yeah. The first fight. So I thought the first fight was was tough because I thought that Tyson Fury was winning that fight, you know, with the exception of the two knockdowns. And maybe he right. won round, I think the second round as well. So I, I had to fight 7 5. It was skin tight. You know, he went through the champion, and it, was, it was skin tight. Right. Uh, but, 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 I thought the I mean I thought Tyson Fury did just enough to squeak it out. The second fight, you know, when he got up in when Tyson Fury got up in the 12th round, the first fight, that gave him so much encouragement. I yeah. thought that he had boxed well the first fight, but when Tyson Fury trains trainers, I was like, oh no, why? You mean like because he had the right, we had the right, right, right the right. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, he ain't broke, don't fix it. But team the new the new trainer, he. Turned up and stepped up and said, "Well, instead of waiting around and boxing guy, we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna step to him." And when he stepped to him, it, it, you know, it was like he was a, a brilliant with training the training staff. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's I think it's tough for uh, for Wilder to, to come back. You know what I mean, and, and it's also tough for somebody to beat you three times. It's always yeah. tough to beat three times. You know, and if I even some guys I beat, I beat three and four times, but. It was tough. I didn't say it was easy. I mean, yeah. you know, but I mean, to get, you know, to get to get the win. So yeah. uh, it, I, I think that uh, Deontay Wilder will have to go to a lot of things he did in the first fight. I mean, the second fight to scratch that because right, that's spilled milk. You can't cry over that no more. It's over. And, and, and let's get rid of the second. That behind you. But the, the first fight, go back to what you were doing. Uh, that where you were successful. You know, in that fight, and that weighted out so much. I mean, box this guy, box him, touch him to the body. You get a jab going. Yeah, you did jab, but you gotta, you gotta go downstairs so you can get the right hand over the top. You gotta like land downstairs in the basement. You know what I mean? And he's got the speed and move around side to side. You no, know, double jab, one, two, one, two, three, move around. Sometimes tie a guy up, hold him. You know what I mean? Sometimes yeah. I think Deontay Wilder spent a lot of time holding the guy. Tie the guy up is a part of boxing. You know what I mean? You get away with as much as you can get away with. You mean I was fighting Oliver McCall in Madison Square Garden. I believe you were there. Yeah. <laughs> fight Oliver McCall. And I remember uh the coach, I mean the coach, I'm sorry, the referee was saying, Hey, come on, D, let him go. He's grabbed my hand, called me by name, he said, Come on, D, let, let him go, let him go. You hold him. I'm like, it was Oliver McCall, or Derek Jefferson. No, it was Oliver McCall and Derek Jefferson. And Derek Jefferson, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You fought a bowl. Yeah, three or four times there. Uh, right. So, you know, you know, certainly the Mecca boxing, so you know, it was so nice to be there. But to fight Al McCall, who's tough as nails, who doesn't play well with others at yeah. all. I mean, you can say he's, you know, nutty, crazy, whatever, but <laughs> he can fight. But he can fight. That's, the street, that's that street in him from Chicago, too, baby. <laughs> Ain't nobody jumping in there asking, say, hey, I want to fight him. Right. You know, test. You know, I mean, Don King, you know, to, to get close to him, he said, hey, Darrell, when you're close to me, this is how you get close to me. Be all of my call. I'm like, oh, man, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. I mean, I'm thinking you would give me somebody else. Yeah. But say, hey, you want to get close to me, this is how you get close to me. You know, fight my son. Because that's like his son. Because if you go into Don King's office, you see all of McCall pictures all around the wall. All around the wall. You see more all of them McCall than you see Mike Tyson. Damn, really? You know, <laughs> so, so uh -huh. So I know that you know they have a good relationship, but to beat him, I mean, on that stage, it was it was it was huge. And I feel like I beat him, you know, convincingly, uh, because every time I made an adjustment, he didn't he was you no, know, he was like like they laid the dollar short and making an adjustment for the for the next round or next, you know, next combination. Right. So that was that was that was a huge, huge, huge win for me. And you know, I had to fight. I had to fight. I had to fight. And it, and it was beautiful. So um, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Deontay has to, he has to have faith in, like, as he has in the past, he has to have faith that that right hand is his money punch. He got to believe it, but he can't just depend on it, rely on it entirely. You have faith that it'll be there, but you got to do some other things. You got to put some other little, some other little, some other tools in your toolbox and your arsenal. You have yeah. to, yeah, you have to go to the body. You mean to be more successful? Yeah, be more successful. You got to know. Touch him upstairs, 
the right hand downstairs. If you can't get them upstairs, take them downstairs. Take some steam out of that big guy. Take the steam out of him. You're both sides. Boom, boom, and body. Move. You can't stay there. You can't go boom, boom, and he's going to fall on top of you. You got to go right. boom, boom, and die. Come around. Yeah, come around. Get around. Yeah. So I think that uh, it's going to be tough because I think it's the mental block that Deontay has right now. I uh, said the same thing. It's a mental block that he has right now. It's, it's a tough one to overcome. He, because he's going to be punch shot. Yeah, he'll be, he be gun shot. He'll be a little bit gun yep. shot. And, but, you know, he has to. You gotta have a, you gotta figure out if you can have a short memory, a short term memory. It's kind of like the quarterbacks in the NFL. You know, you throw an interception, come back. You gotta have a short term memory. Let, let, let that go. That's over. With. Let's get ready for the next one. You know, what right. I mean? if he can, if he can psychologically um, move on and say, "Hey, this is our first fight. We're fresh. You know, and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a, I'm gonna make a commitment to the body as I'm moving around, using my legs." I'm gonna keep this guy. I'm gonna keep this guy at, my, at this the end of my stick, end of my just touch him, just touch him. Just, just keep touching. Just touch him upstairs and downstairs. You gotta keep him with that right hand is good upstairs. Then it must be good downstairs as well. You know what I mean you tall go boom, boom right there. And you go boom. And that, I don't want to say John Reese jab and grab. I want to say you know well, you gotta be able to move around, but you gotta you can't be afraid to tie the guy up. You can't be afraid to, to get in to get inside. I'm not saying get inside because of the body. But you get inside where you you now on the end of his punch Jesus. It's a tall right. man. You know what I mean? And he's sassy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good. I mean, I, I, I like him. I like his personality. Uh yeah. he's very, I mean, I, and he'll go knock you out, then he will go have a beer with you at the bar. He wanna like, you know, yeah. you know, he don't care. Yeah. He he gonna grab the bartender, she a pretty girl and kiss her behind the, the bar and yeah. give her the teeth and say, ah, I mean. Yeah, he's he a good sportsman and, 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 a, and a hell of a dude uh, outside of the boxing ring. So, you know, I, I like him a lot for that, who he is as a person, other than just the WBC heavyweight champ of the world. You know what I mean? He stands for more than the, the fighting part. You and, know? and he's sincere. I mean, he's yeah. sincere. I mean, it's nice because the heavyweight champions, you know, Deontay Wilder as well, you know, these guys, these men, I like how they, they allow – you know, be allowed to support to come to them and be able to share their views and their, you know, their thoughts, you know, their thoughts and their, th their thinking process, you know, and share with the world of, of how they see it. You know, like what kind of like, what side of, what side of the world they see from. And yeah. it's interesting to, to go inside and kind of see what these guys do. And, and it's, we're, all, we're all human and, and, and yeah. we're good and we've all been through a few things. And so, that, that that that's huge to to overcome. Everybody wants wants to see an underdog and see an um, see an underdog become successful. Yeah, that, and that, that's a good analogy. I'm gonna move on to my last topic because I know you've been training and uh, I, I appreciate you giving me your time and everything. Vasily Lomachenko versus Tiafimo Lopez this Saturday night on ESPN. A lot of hype behind this fight. I personally. Being uh, around boxing as long as I have, Tia Fimo is the future of boxing, no doubt. He will be the people's champion, he, and he's already a world champion, IBF, a lightweight champion, if you will. But I feel that this moment in his career, Lomachenko is too soon for the likes of Lopez to stand in front of this soon in his career. Uh, Speak I, on that. Who you like for this fight coming up this weekend and why? I agree with you 1,000%. I think that Lomachenko is just, it's like putting in um, a David Mexican, Reed. David you know, Reed versus Trinidad. David Reed versus Trinidad. And, but I'll take you a step further. Uh, the uh, What's our, our Mexican uh, champion son? Um, um, Chavez. 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 Going, going, going against Floyd Mayweather. It was, yeah. it was just too soon. I mean, just too soon for him to fight. To fight for me. I think that uh, 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 I think Lomachenko is just he had too much, too much. You know, he's too rich. He's too rich for me. I mean, too seasoned. You know what I mean? Too yeah. seasoned. And um, I, I think he still has too much for him. He, he's he's definitely heads and shoulders above him. And 
this this is this too soon. I'm, I'm not sure why it's the fight so soon. Maybe because the world is crazy and say, hey, you know, anything happen, anything can happen, but I don't think anything will happen that we don't we we're not anticipate, which is Lomachenko would will leave as still, still, still. Like we I can. just feel like you know these young guys, you know. They, they, they got their own uh, role models, if you will, that they follow growing up. Maybe it was the Ray Leonard's, who knows, the Oscars, the Floyds. And now these guys, man, they want that microwave money is what I call it. You, They want to get rich quick, fast, in a hurry. They don't want to put the time and the work in and gradually put their, pay their dues to get where they need to be. It's no. coming. There's no hurry for it. Yes, yeah, I mean, he has time. And not only that, but, you know what I mean, he gets the... You know, like, like, let's say, for example, you know, I win the championship. You say, hey, the girl, he's earned it. I mean, he did it the hard way. He did this. And sometimes it feels so good to say, hey, not because my handlers, my promoter, my my manager was this person, this person, and was able to get close to him. You mean, um, uh, Loma Tango's not taking this fight. Would it would have got so good and so young if he only gave you win? And his whole camp doesn't feel like they can win commensally. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. um, boxers are like politicians. Let me, let me get in that. Boxers are like politicians. Every boxer say they will fight anybody, you know, line them up, whatever, until they become the champion. And when they come right. the they say, wait a minute, wait a minute. They'll say, hey, DeVero, you have um, you have three fighters. I'm going to give you 75000 for all three fighters. Who is it? I want the guy who's closer to the graveyard. <laughs> I want the guy who right. the deals. I'm His gonna say, legs ain't on them no more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. So you say, hey, I, I, I applaud Lomachenko for taking the fight. You know what I mean? I I, I applaud um, Tio Fimo for challenging him. Yeah, 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 for challenging But, you know, and if he loses, you know what? If he wins, it's, it's, it's the world. He owns the world. If, if he, he loses, it could, it could discourage the hell out of him. He's he still. He's still respected by all his peers. He hasn't lost any. He hasn't lost any status because he lost to the champion. He lost to anyone else, but he lost to the champion. So say, hey, you know, we, you know, we still have, we still have a goat. We're still young, and you know, we, you know, we we learn from that. Now we're gonna take some of the things we got in that fight, and we're gonna be able to, you know, carry it over to our next fight, or maybe not a possible rematch. You know, I don't know if it's gonna be that good, to, you know, to want a rematch, but I think yeah. that he'll be champion. You know, of, of sure, of course. You know, uh, one day of, down the road. Yeah, down the road. But I think it's too soon. The 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 trash talking that has built up, and, and I get it, trash talking in this point now, we can't say it sells tickets because of the pandemic. So there is no asses getting put in seats. But, and I commend Bob Arum and Top Rank for not making this a pay-per-view fight. The fight that the fans want to see, and I want y'all to see it for free on ESPN. That being said, I think we're going to see a, a, a well-rested, old, uh, original Lomo, and he going to come in there fierce on Lopez. And that's just my opinion. And I really hope Lopez don't get hurt. But it's boxing. You know it's boxing. Anything can happen on any given night. You know what? And Lopez like, can shock the world. We don't know. And, and, you know what? And uh, the, uh, I, I really applaud uh, the promoter, um, Bob Aaron. Bob Aaron for doing an amazing job. Always yeah. he has been he's been busy and you know he's 90 years old and his his staff is just it's just so vibrant. Uh, you know, I got a chance to be there with him uh and um uh, and uh it wasn't it wasn't, it wasn't Vegas but bubble, yeah. No Nevada, you know, just yeah. a few months a few months ago. And he just staying busy, staying active. And so I applaud him for for him and the staff for keeping the, the boxing relevant and keeping oh. it private. I'm like, like we are happy. ESPN. I mean, you know, he, he brought back to boxing back to us, and not only that, he has given all the up and coming prospects a look. The opportunity to fight on national it. television. National television <laughs> and a pro debut, D. <laughs> and not only that, but he's 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 keeping them he's keeping them busy and. And, and he's giving other people a chance because they, they have a chance in this game. You know, yeah. But, you know, if a guy looks good, and maybe he loses, but he looks good, they bring him back. There's a right. such thing as a good loss. People don't understand that. Yes, it's a good loss. Sometimes yeah. it's a good loss, but hey, I mean, I remember, I don't necessarily feel like I won, 
but uh, I, mean, I don't necessarily feel like I lost, but I um, I fought uh, Vladimir Klitschko and you know the people yeah. in Helen, uh, uh Vladimir, they said, man, Val, you, uh, you, did, you did a good job. It did tell me I won. Don't tell me I did a good job. Tell me I won. Right. You did yourself a good job. So we'll, we'll bring you back. We're not, we're not going to fight you again, but we'll right. bring you over here. <laughs> we'll bring right. You over here. So the television exposure is everything. Sometimes yeah. you may fight a guy over here in Wyoming or Nebraska or Colorado, and no one really knows, but the 2,000 people who went to the fight or the 1,500 people who went to the fight. But if you get into that, that camera, man, that camera, you know, that television gives you instant credibility, instant access to, to the world. And you get to build a fan base that people never knew who you were. Now they know your name. Exactly. You know? Hey, man, uh, real quick before you go, uh, uh, one one last topic I want to talk about real quick. Give me give me your best two minutes on Kell Brook versus Bud Crawford. I, I, again, you know, it's similar to uh, uh, to Philly, uh, Lopez and um, Lomo and Lomo Lomo Chenko. Um, you know, I, th I think uh, Nebraska just has too much heart and grit and. He, he's sassy, you know. He, he, even if he's getting hit, he still has confidence in his world that he can get it done. Um, I, I, you know, I, I like him. I like him because he's from the like a blue collar slate. You know, what I mean, I went, I went to school there. Uh, I mean, it, it's just a good, a good, a good energy. Uh, just a good heart, like a blue collar worker. I mean, like he's going to work. Like he's packing the lunch in a hard hat. He's going to work, and he yeah. found a way to get it done. And even though the fight looks like he's not going his way for maybe two rounds, and he figured it out. He figured it out, and he makes it happen. Make so adjustments. He makes adjustments. You no, know, he makes adjustments you know, on the job, and that's kind of how you know how it is. And, and, and he's successful. And he. And, and, I mean, and he Floyd, Floyd was a masterful uh, thinker like that. Never studied his opponents. Never studied tape. By the by, the fourth round, Floyd had you figured out, and that was it. You it, it was over. He took over after that. So I kind of agree with you there. I like I like the matchup. I, I I would probably say the Brook fight might be Bud's biggest test fight yet. And and Brook did have some success when he did fight Spence. He fought him at the wrong weight, but he was giving Spence somewhat of a boxing clinic before he got caught and got hit in the eye, and, and you know that changed the game. But so he's he hasn't been active either. So it's going to be real interesting to see which Kel Brook we get on that night. And, and of course, Bud uh, can't knows that, and 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 they're saying, "Hey, we accept this fight." He, he's not fresh off, he's, right? He's been he's been uh, he's been on the shelf for a little while. Yeah, we've been a little more active than he is at that level. So Absolutely, so get up at this level, you know, and, and compete at, at that for that twelve rounds. What about what about Earl Spence? Will he have a fight again? Earl Spence got a fight coming up. With Danny Garcia, that's coming up November the twenty first, I believe, or yeah, November twenty first, and that's going to be in Arlington, Texas. Does, 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 Mike, does, does Mike Garcia? Does he just you know? Does he just swing for the fences? Or Danny, uh, Danny, he fight Danny Garcia. Right there, I'm sorry, Danny. Did, yeah, does Danny swing for the fences? Uh, how, how, how does he approach that fight? Danny, Danny Garcia to me is more of a one dimensional fighter. His best punch is his left hook. Uh, but his boxing skills, they're not shady. It, here's my thing. You know, nobody really knows which Earl Spence we're going to get from that that crucial accident he had and flying out of a Ferrari at 100 miles an hour with no seatbelt on, and you telling me your upper torso you didn't get banged up and around, your spine, and you got up and walked away from this crash with rest, of course. But... If I don't see the original Earl Spence that I'm used to seeing in like the first two to three rounds, then I'm going to say hey, it's questionable if he'll win that fight. Danny has a good chance of beating him if we don't see the original Earl Spence come out. Fair enough, fair enough. It's just, you know, it's just tough, you know, watching the video of him. That car. thousand miles an hour. Woo! I mean, he's, he's human. I mean, he's human. He's 28 years old. Maybe he's 29 now, but you know that's 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 a lot on your body. It's not to overcome, and maybe he's under influence. So you know maybe that was the best thing for him because he 
you know, he, he, he didn't he, feel no pain. <laughs> he, he, he didn't feel pain. You know, he was he was numb, whatever it was. Uh, I don't know. I, I, you know, it's just hard. You know, it's really hard to come back after that accident. Yeah. From, I don't know, what is it, seven, eight months ago? Yeah. So they, it, they, they fought in like what? What was that? Was that February, I think? Something like that? Yeah, but he, he won. He, he's a champion. Like, oh, God. I mean, he just won. Sometimes it's nice to have, you know, good yeah. people. You know, still people just says, hey, look, man, we're not going to go out tonight. We're not going to do this. I mean, like, because um, yeah. I remember, I remember, you know, I'm from Washington, D.C., and I, I I got, you know, I felt that that the life, the way I was living that, that, that maybe I wanted to do something with some of the other guys to go make some money. And I had friends to say, man, look, how about if you don't come here and I'll do this for you if you don't come here. I'm like, that's a deal. Like when you make it, a whole hood makes it. You know, yeah. a whole hood makes it, a whole community makes it. Like, like that's juju, that's the barrel, that's the right there, you know, that's him right there. But yeah. If it if, if you don't, I mean like 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 how do I get how do we change we how do we get Southeast DC on the map? How do we get you know how do we talk about that? How do we talk about all the good things that's happening in the city, but we but we need that. So and instead of you coming out here hanging out here on this corner, you go, you, you know, you do your thing. And so I've had people my age tell me to, to you know to go somewhere else. I bypass DC and, 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 and start a life somewhere else like Denver. Yeah, you know, I, I thought that, that my, my father, uh, when he was, you know, he, he was gone now, but yeah. I thought he, he gave me some, some valuable advice. One was to say, he said, see people for people. See people for, he said, see people for people. Number two, he said, you can always come home. He said, try and live somewhere else. And I did. I never came back. Right. <laughs> never did live. So, you know, those were, you know, really, pretty good advice from, from him. And I'm so grateful for that, for that advice oh, he's given me. All right, champ. Hey, we're going to let you get out of here, man. Uh, before you go, tell the fans uh, who you are once again, how they can follow you on all your social media platforms. And then, of course, let them know they're watching the Brawler Sports Show, Brawler Sports Media, baby. Definitely Brawler Sports Media all day, all day. Uh, you know, TOSboxing.com. We, we've been here for, I don't know, for 20, 20 years, it feels like. Uh, I thank again Lawrence Clay Bay, Super Heavyweight, uh, Super Heavyweight uh, Boxer, 1996, who gave me a nickname back in, 19, in April 95 <laughs> for the World Championships. Uh, we, we boxed thousand rounds, you know, against each other. Uh, so just keep on loving on me. Uh, uh, thank you for not forgetting about the little guy. Thank you, Pretty Ricky, for always having our bond. Uh, I, I'm just, I'm just grateful to, to still be up to me. You know, treading water in, in this crazy, this crazy world we're in right now. Yeah, uh, but, but it's nice to get some some normalcy uh, being here at the sweatshop and, and loving on. And also my TYP kids, the Test on You program. You know, my, I can't wait to get my babies back, man. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Don't. So it's all good. So thank you again for for, for allowing me to do your show. My man. Hey, we want to thank my man, my special guest, DeVero Touch of Sleep Williamson, for coming on the Brawler Sports Boxing Show tonight. This is my man, 100 grand, gentleman and a scholar, in and out of the ring. I've been knowing him for probably 20 years now, and this, this is about as stand-up as they get. I like, I, like the, I like brothers like this, man. This is a brotherhood him and I will have for the rest of our lives, and it was a blessing to have met him when I did, and we got our acquaintance. Uh, once again, it's your boy Rick Mohammed, Brawler Sports Media in the building, and this was the Brawler Sports Boxing Show. Until next time, boxing fans, peace. Peace. All right, baby. Hey, baby. Thank you. Yes, sir. Brawlers, baby. Brawlers, baby.